everybody, and welcome to another Baller of the Month installation. I am here with February's NCDA Rookie of the Month, Nick Fidoa. My name is Becca. I am the NCDA's Director of Female Engagement, and I'm also Michigan State's Assistant Coach. So I have the pleasure of knowing Nick now since September. Uh, I had to think about when we started, but I will let Nick go ahead and introduce himself so everybody else can know him a little more. Uh, my name is Nick Fidoa. I'm a current junior at Michigan State uh, studying electrical and computer engineering. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And like Becca said, this is my first year playing dodgeball. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll start out by saying congratulations on getting Rookie of the Month. It was definitely well-deserved after the insane amount of catching that we saw from you in February. Um, I guess I'll plug it early with Tony Stumpo's Feast of a Joke. But... <laughs> We'll just jump into it here. Um, what made you choose club dodgeball? So it was actually kind of like by chance. Um, for those that don't know, Sparticipation is like the big student org kind of free for all that Michigan State has at the beginning of the year before classes begin. Um, and so I was at that and I was actually on my way out, headed back to my apartment. Um, and I was walking by some of like the tables that were on my way out just to see you know, what else there was just as I was leaving and walked by the dodgeball table. I was like, hmm, dodgeball, that sounds fun. Like, I mean, you play dodgeball when you're younger. And um, so signed up, put my name on the list, um, showed up to the first practice and, you know, it's been history ever since. So thankful that I decided to walk by those last few tables and find out what dodgeball was about. I certainly can speak for MSU in saying that we are glad that you walked by those last <laughs> few tables too. Um, I know, you know, obviously you came from the first practice. You've been consistent the whole way through. What are some of the biggest changes you've noticed in your game from fall semester into spring? Um, I think I know a lot more. Like at first you go in and like I said, like you play when you're younger, but it's kind of free for all. There's no real strategy. Um, so like over the months that I've been able to, go to practices and go to tournaments, you know, you learn the strategy, um, what we're trying to do. Um, you also like gain confidence, like when you learn the strategy, knowing where you, where you want to be, you know, what throws you want to make. Um, so I would say just overall knowledge of like the strategy that goes behind the scenes and just gaining confidence and knowing that um, I'm helping, you know, push our strategy and do what we want to do. Yeah, and strategy is definitely one of the hardest things for rookies to learn and pick up on. It seems like you, as you watch people develop in the league, the first couple seem to get it pretty quick, and then you see people kind of grow into it. And with that, you really can't learn strategy without a solid core group of veterans. But how else do you feel like the Michigan State veterans have helped you develop as this season's gone on? I think, you know, all of them in their own way, you know, you have Josh, who's a little more outgoing than say girling, but you know, they're all going to reach out to you, you know, um, help you um, see improvements you can make or point out stuff that you did good. So, you know, that you want to keep doing that. Um, so I think, you know, just their encouragement that they have while also, you know, pushing you to be your best um, is something that I've enjoyed having from them. Obviously as captains, they've, gone through the whole deal being seniors so they know what they're talking about being able to learn from them is something that I've um, taken to heart and enjoyed from them yeah this is definitely going to be a rough core group to lose but yeah <laughs> they've they've been doing their best with teaching everybody and it's been great to see um now with that too like you said in the beginning you are a junior already and obviously you said this was your first year with the league being um, farther up in your college career and just finding the NCDA, you know, your time's really shortened to establish yourself as those quote unquote top threats in the league. How do you feel like you've worked to set yourself apart from other rookies this year? I would say just making my presence felt, whether it be through catches or, you know, getting kills, obviously, um, by knocking people out. I think just obviously Michigan State being the top dog in the NCDA right now with number one in power rankings. Um, being able to assert yourself as a presence on the number one team kind of shows that you stand out. Um, and so, you know, playing my role and doing my thing, obviously you have the captains who are going to take most of the big throws like Barry and Gerling um, can take out pretty much anyone they want. Um, and you have Josh who 
makes the most ridiculous catches that you just he's an old man with old knees and yet still always seems to wow you with something um so obviously those are your like top guys and then just filling in behind them being that next guy up on uh like the most prominent team I think is some some way that I've been able to you know assert myself along with the catches and throws that I've been able to make absolutely and yeah Josh for those that don't know Josh is always complaining about something that hurts and then we'll go out there and make the most agile move to make a catch that you've ever seen and you're like I thought you just said your knees hurt. He's like, yeah, they, I mean, they do, but like I had to make it. <laughs> um, well, for those who don't know, we're on an IM basketball team. Um, me and Josh and Thomas are too. Last week or the week before this week, because it's spring break, we're in our first playoff game and dude goes and grabs rim, like can barely grab net throughout the entire season at practice. And then just out of nowhere, just bounces up there. And it's like, Jesus came and healed his knees or something like that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Oh man, I didn't know that. That's funny. He's going to, he's probably going to listen to this and be like, what the heck, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a very fresh take for a rookie to hear you're more so focused around your role and how to make the team better as a whole versus how you can push yourself as an individual. And I know, you know, obviously I've watched you play since September and just watched the exponential growth, but for those that have watched Michigan State throughout the season, they've seen you already develop into one of the top arms for Michigan State. And not only that, but you've developed yourself into such a strong catcher just overall for the NCDA. Um, for anybody that wasn't aware of the stats, Nick had 12 catches in one game against Wisconsin at Gauntlet on uh, February 4th and finished this uh, month of February with 24 total catches against Grand Valley, Saginaw, all the teams that attended MDC, and then UWP at the gauntlet. Uh, we, it's unconfirmed, but 12 catches may be a single match record for the NCDA, which is absolutely phenomenal, especially in your first season. What do you think, especially now that you've shown that you can be such a strong catcher, has helped you become such a big defensive threat? I think number one overall, just being like, I mean, you see Josh do it at practice, so you kind of learn from the best. Um, and then, you know, just playing baseball and other sports when I was younger, you know, you have hand-eye coordination, especially for baseball, that's big. Um, I think being able to hit a baseball is the hardest thing to do in sports, and I will die on that cross. But um, so I think hand-eye coordination and just learning to trust yourself, obviously the first few times, you know, you have Alec and Barry thrown at you when you're first at practice, and it's like, how the heck am I going to catch this? Um, but over time, you know, you – catch one or two you kind of build that confidence and kind of get that in your head that you just got to react and that's something that I think that if you think about it you're not going to do it whereas if you just trust yourself um, react to what you see with your hand-eye coordination you're going to make the catches so I think just trusting yourself and learning from the best are the big things that I've been able to take away and kind of build my catching skills on so basically trust yourself, don't think, and have a hard team, a hard throwing teammate throw back at you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Have someone okay. to have someone to warm you up. And then once you catch them, or like Kevin before he decided to like cripple himself by jumping over the divider, you know, have them throw hard at you, start to gain some confidence, and then just trust yourself that you can make the catches when you need to. Yeah, rip to Kevin's knee. Uh he'll be back though soon enough. You'll at least have him for next year to work out with everything. There we go. Um, yeah, but good. It's good advice to hear from, especially again, being a rookie, you have such a great mindset about the game and you already seem to know everything so well that it's really nice to be able to pick your brain through this. Now I know uh, nationals are a month away here, so we're getting down into the home stretch, but if travel or anything weren't an option, what team would you want to play before nationals? I would probably say JMU. Um, just because, you know, been able to create play Grand Valley. They're a great team, always have good games against them. Um, but obviously with the East East Coast schools, you don't really get to play them as much unless you travel or they travel or at nationals. And, you know, JMU, from what I've heard, um, obviously haven't played them yet myself, but from what I've heard is always a good team, pretty powerhouse team out East. So 
being able to play them, see what they're like, get that experience would be something that um, if we could before going into nationals, it'd be great. But obviously that's probably not going to happen. Um, but I would say JMU is probably the next team I'm looking forward to playing most. Hopefully if we get to play them at nationals. <laughs> Of course. Yeah. Now it sounds like JMU might be a safe bet for this next one, but after watching film and, you know, seeing teams throughout the year, who would you say is your nationals final four prediction? I would say us, obviously, um, probably JMU. I would say Cincinnati after winning ODC, they're pretty good. And then last one, I mean, it's always hard to count out Grand Valley, especially with them getting better as the season's going on. Um, but from scores I've seen, I haven't really watched them a whole lot myself, but from what I've heard, you know, Penn State is emerging as a pretty, pretty good school. So I think that last one could, you know, go a couple of ways um, and just kind of depends on who has a better game and actually being able to see Penn State in person and what they're like. Yeah, Penn State's definitely a bit of a wild card there, but I can agree there. I feel like they have the talent and the ability to kind of shake some things up in nationals, which would be very interesting to see. Um, now, as far as um, team goals, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say with this for nationals as well, but what personal or team goals do you have to finish out the season? Um, obviously, you no know, personal goal. I'd always love to win rookie of the year. You know, it'd be an honor, especially with, you know, playing alongside um, one other front runner, I'd say in Matt Barabal, dude as a cannon. Um, just setting myself up as, you know, the best rookie, I think would be pretty cool. Um, but obviously that's not the main thing. Main thing was, or is still to win the national championship. I know MDC was a big goal, especially to send our seniors off. Right. So that was a good first step to get that done. Um, big win there, but obviously, you know, like Kobe jobs, not finished. You gotta go and finish out the year undefeated record means nothing. If you don't end it off with a trophy. So that's kind of, not kind of, that is the main goal. Had to reference a goat there. I love it. Um, <laughs> and not to, you know, make anybody feel sad here. Whoever's listening to this too. If you do do, if you do do, if you do have two practices a week, there's 10 practices left until nationals. So it's crunch time for a lot of teams out there. Um, looking forward to see what Michigan State does. I'm looking forward to see how the rest of the league shakes out for the Final Four and Championship Sunday as a whole. This is going to be a really intense bracket this year, and it's going to be really exciting to watch. Um, now that we got all the heavy stuff out of the way, we do like to end with some fun questions. So first one for you, do you have any pre- or post-tournament go-to snacks or meals? And if so, what are they? I would say pregame. I'm a big breakfast person. Like I'm not one of those people that can roll out of bed and just go about my day without eating something to start it off. And especially with games, usually starting in the morning, um, have some sort of fruit um, for me is a must. And then um, like eggs or some something that has to do with egg, whether it be like a sandwich or an omelet. Um, that's kind of my go-to, like get ready, get going. Um, and then post game is whatever I can really find. Honestly, I'm a big, I'm a big food eater. You can catch me, you know, first thing in between games, going to grab a snack. Um, so I would say post game usually is something what I would call upper level fast food. So whether it be like canes or Qdoba or something like that, um, I would say that's probably my go-to to refuel. I feel like most dodgeball players can agree. Like, it's whatever is within the closest, quickest vicinity to go get food after a tournament, and especially those long day ones. Uh, it's one thing we've been trying to tell our rookies, at least for nationals, like day one and day two are so long that by the end of it, you're just waiting to go get any form of food that you can that is close by. It doesn't even matter if it's a little bit to get you to like a main meal later. You just need something. Exactly. And now I know I already know what this answer is going to be because you always ask for it every time in the hype videos, but what is your go-to hype up song? You gotta go. Just want to rock by Lil Uzi. Um, you know, I think, I feel like I kind of brought it or at least like pushed for it, but you know, everyone vibes on the team with it. You had me and Alec just singing it over and over when we were working scoreboard at MDC. 
um, DQ starts dancing to it. So, you know, whole team's a vibe. They know what's up, but definitely that. I think it's safe to say if you catch this guy, like, listening to something or, like, jamming out to something in his head, it's probably this song, because I feel like you're always listening to that song. Whenever yeah. li- listening to warm-up music, that's always got to be at least somewhere in the queue. Can't go without it. I think that was the first thing you added to the MSU Dodgeball playlist, too, was just yep. when I rock my little Uzi. <laughs> Yeah, that is our amazing Nick Fidoa for MSU. You're missing, you're missing the one that Kevin wanted. Oh, <laughs> okay. We'll add this in. So uh, anybody that doesn't know, uh, Kevin and I are married. We have two pets. We both coach Four. Michigan State Dodgeball together. Four pets, two dogs, sorry. Um, the Dodgeball team has started a favorites war with our new puppy this year, Roshi. And it's now probably half the team. So Kevin wanted this to be in here. Who is Roshi's actual favorite? If I'm being honest, based on only because they have experience, I would put it at either Alec or Barry, just because they've had the most time with them. I would say that in the time that we've had with them, me and Bearwall have kind of made a big rush into becoming, you know, the favorites and, moving our way up there. Um, one person I would say was not it is Allie. She can cry about it all she wants, but she just can't make the cut. So I would say Alec and Barry, just because they have that experience ahead of us, but me and Barry Ball are coming in strong. All right. And with that, that concludes our February baller of the month with Nick Fidoa. Thank you again for joining me, Nick. And we'll Thanks look forward to seeing you play at nationals. Oh yeah. I'm looking forward to it.